Hi guys, just thought I'd show you a little item that I've popped into my Etsy shop. And I've got four packs. Oh, actually, I'll show you the journal I put them in first. Okay, so this was my raggedy journal that I showed a few days ago. If you didn't see that, I'll put the link in the comments box below. But um, in the front of that, I had a little notebook, fabric-covered notebook collaged on the inside and some scrap papers and I've just sat mine into the front pocket of my journal but you can slip it in anywhere like in a pocket or leave it loose in your journal or through a belly band or something oops let me just get rid of this okay so that's just how I used one in that journal Anyway, I've made a few packs with some of the little notebooks that I'll pop into my Etsy if anyone wants to use some in their journals. And they're all a little bit different. I'll show this one last. And then I'll show you how I quickly make them. So this is one I've made for myself for another journal. This is a thick canvasy type material. They're all the same. They're just collage book pages inside the cover. Coffee dyed paper. This one's got some book page and some uh, pages out of an accounting notebook. This is actually some vintage paper that I found at Reverse Garbage um, a few weeks ago. Actually, maybe a week ago. <laughs> what am I saying? A few weeks ago. Yeah, about a week ago. Okay, so... I've only got four packs um, and I've numbered them so you can tell which one because each one's slightly different. I'm going to start with pack number two. Um, so they've all got different material. So this is some of the material. This is vintage material. So collaged inside and out, stitched around the side. So there's not many pages in them because they're meant to be nice and thin and flat to fit into your journal. It's just an extra like a little embellishment in your journal. Actually, all three of these are vintage fabric actually. This one's got some flowers. And I don't know if you can see, it's um, kind of a black material with Browny, goldish, and purplish speckles. That one. This is my favourite. I don't know if the colour shows right on camera though. It's it's like a dark red, but kind of a browny tinge. I think most of them are the same inside and they've been stitched in okay so that's little pack number two so I've put three in a pack um, I put three in a pack you know thinking that you'd use them in your own journals or maybe journals you make for other people but if um, if you make a lot of journals and you want some more and you can't be bothered making embellishments, um, just let me know because I can make packs with bigger numbers if if that suits. Okay, this is some pink fabric. <laughs> it's so cute, look. It's pink on black with uh, purple little stem and flowers. And because it had pink in it, this one I've put a pink page. has that same fabric one in there it's the same as well and one of those as well so you can see they're all different sizes okay so that's pack three pack four 
four has these two the same as well that fabric I love this fabric I've been using it on everything I'll run out soon <laughs> this one I think I have used the last of it and this one has a black and white fabric I don't know how old this fabric is Found that at an op shop, I think. I think it might have been a dress or something that I cut up. Okay, so you'll see one listing in Etsy um, for all of them, and then you can pick which one you want in that one listing pack. One, two, three, or four. Okay, pack one is a little different. It's got an extra little booklet, um, and that's because... I've used this fabric. Um, this was off an old dress as well. But the dress did have tiny little pulls in it. So there's little bits of fabric. See? You know when there's little pulls? I don't know if you can see that. So there are a few little pull marks where the fabric is lifted a little. I mean, it doesn't matter, they're junk journals, but because that one had the fabric with a few pulls, I'm just going to put it in the um, in the pack, and it'll be the same price as the other packs, but it'll have this extra little mini booklet in it, just to make up for it. I mean, all the fabric, um, it's either old or pre-loved anyway so you, you've got to expect some marks but I thought that one isn't as pretty as the rest so I put an extra little booklet in <laughs> I think that little one's cute I might make some more little ones I really like it then another one with that material and a blue one this was uh, some vintage fabric from my grandmother's, um, my grandmother's fabric stash, got threads everywhere, it's really pretty. I had been saving this to use, um, you know, on spines for little golden book journals because it's kind of cutesy, but um, yeah, I'm kind of over the little golden book journal <laughs> phase. I do still have a lot on my bookshelf, but... Maybe I'll get back into them. I've got to be in the mood for them. I'm kind of sick of seeing them at the moment. I might do some for Easter though. I've got a few Easter bunny books. Anyway, so uh, those little four packs will be in my Etsy. If you can't be bothered making them yourself. Because I know not everyone has a sewing machine. Um, but if you do want to make your, some yourself. I'm going to make one now with you. So I do need to make some more for my own journals. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sorry. Okay. Sorry, I'm really choked up. The smoke here in Sydney from the bushfires uh, is terrible, terrible. We had some rain last night, big storm, so um, it's cleared a fair bit. <clears throat> but it's slowly coming back this afternoon. It's been killing me. Anyway, so what I've started with is just get yourself um, an old used envelope. So you can see this one's been ripped apart. You can use new envelopes if you like, but um, I'm a recycler, so I like using the old envelopes. Um, if you don't have any junk mail envelopes, just use any paper or cardboard folded together. doesn't matter. Use a cereal box even. I'm just using envelopes because I want them to be really thin and a bit flexible because I like to put them on the inside uh, covers of the journals. So I'm just going to split the side apart. Don't worry if it's all raggedy like this because um, we're going to trim it down later anyway. Okay. 
you might have some little bits that are sticking up here and here you know where the envelope closes just glue those babies down oh i need my oh my gosh <laughs> i need to change my baking paper it's so look i think now stuff is sticking to this because it's so old and worn out just going to glue that down Yeah. and i know this may seem obvious how to make them but um look to be honest i like making simple easy um little projects these are a bit more time consuming because you need to collage the inside and cover it with fabric and sew it but it's easy um and that's what I like. It's not overcomplicated and it's materials that everybody has. Okay. And to be honest, every time I post uh, something that I don't show how to make it, there's always somebody who asks, oh, can you show us how to make it? So I just thought since I'm going to make a few more for myself to use in journals, I might as well um, show you. Now, I've been using, oh, don't worry if there's writing on the front. Some of the ones I've been using, um, they're those reply paid envelopes, but some have, you know, handwriting and that. Don't worry. Um, I've just left it because I'm using darker fabrics. But if you're going to use a lighter fabric, you may want to just turn your envelope inside out so that the writing doesn't show through the fabric. So you can collage over this on the inside and put the fabric on the outside. But I'm not going to, so I don't mind. I'm, I'm just using dark fabric, so I'll just leave it like this. Now I've been using, I like to use a glue stick when I stick paper, a lot of papers down because I don't like, um, you know when you use a wet glue, I don't like, well one, it gets all wrinkly which is fine for these because you can flatten them. But I don't like gluey fingers. <laughs> I don't like gluey fingers. And also I don't like a lot of the wet glues. Um, you know, they leave a shiny coating. So things like Mod Podge, it leaves that shiny plasticky look and feel to it. And if you're in Sydney, it's very hot and humid and... I find it's always sticky. Even if you use a little corn flour or something to dust it over, it it always has that stickiness to it. Um, so I'm, I'm not a huge Mod Podge fan, to be honest. Um, you can use matte Mod Podge, but I still think it's a bit shiny. Um, I usually use a glue stick, but um, I might still use a glue stick. I was thinking I might use some matte decoupage glue. Like not Mod Podge, something else, but um, I'll still use, um, I'll go ahead and use this. Probably could have finished it by the time I stopped talking. Okay, so. Don't worry, I'm not going to have you sit here and watch me cover the whole thing. So I normally just cover up the spine first. Now these are just book pages. From paperback novels and you can see I've used um, I've just pre-ripped some and you can see there's some different different books in here um, just because you want some different colors or tones see how they're all a bit this one's a lot wider this one's a bit gray this one's a bit yellow um, you can use it all from one book if you want just depends on the look you want I just like a bit of mix of all of them. Mostly I use this yellowed one anyway, so. This is why I go through so many glue sticks. Um, I did do some of the folders with some PVA glue, but um, when I do this sort of work, like just 
gluing stuff down. I usually do it in front of the TV. I've got like a little lap table and um, yeah, I just usually do it in front of the TV and it's just easier to use a glue stick than wet glue with a paintbrush. Oops. See, this is so old that now um, glue and paper is sticking to it. is kind of annoying this glue sticks pretty good as well if you get glue on top of the paper um, it still has like a matte finish and don't be too precious with this just glue that baby down don't think about it just glue it glue it glue it because it's only book pages it's all going to look the same no matter where you put it, to be honest. I do like to have different angles, though. That's the only thing I do kind of worry about. I need something else under here, don't I? That's kind of annoying me. I don't have any. Yeah, I'm never prepared, am I? I just go over the edges a little because you're going to trim it okay so you get the hint um, actually with the spine just fold it a little as you go it's usually more helpful also um, I know this might seem really obvious but when you cover the spine try and use bigger pieces because sometimes I make the dumb mistake of doing this glue a piece there so that when you fold it there's a tiny little bit like that and it doesn't sit nice and flat and it gets all wrinkled up so if you can try and cover the spine with a bigger piece anyway do that keep going glue 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 I feel like I'm on a cooking show then you'll end up with this And it's hanging over the edge. Whoops, sorry. Forgot to put my phone on airplane mode and I was getting a phone call. <laughs> okay, so once you've glued all your papers down, you just end up with that. And then I just trim it. And I don't trim it with the scissors because you want the front and back cover to be the same size. You can trim it with the scissors if you want. I just find it easier and um, you get a straighter, neater finish if you use a trimmer or something like that. I, I do have a guillotine and a paper trimmer, but um, <laughs> to be honest, I just use this most of the time. I just find it easier. These are two items that are always on my desk anyway, so um, I don't need to go pulling anything out. But if you were making a whole bunch of these, um, yeah, you could just stick them all under the guillotine if you want them to all be the same size. Okay, and don't worry, this isn't going in my crap box. This is going <laughs> into my little recycle box. Okay, and you end up with that. I've just been inking the edges with a bit of um, vintage photo. You don't have to ink the edge though. I mean, I just do because I, I like to give it a bit of definition. Oh, I can't hold anything with this stupid thumb. And... Thank you everyone who's been emailing to see how my foot and hand is. Um, to be honest, there's no improvement. I know it looks like I'm using my hand freely, but it's actually um, 
pretty bad. I've been a bit of a whinger about it. I'm normally quite good when I'm sick or injured or something, but been a bit of a sook this time. I think it's because I've, I've got cabin fever. I'm just sitting on the lounge doing nothing with my foot up and my hands in a brace and it's kind of driving me crazy. Okay, so you just have that. Then we're just going to cover it with some fabric. Now I've got a piece of this. Now this is, I, I say vintage fabric, but it's actually, I suppose, a vintage dress. <laughs> this was a dress of my grandmother's. I actually remember her wearing this. And um, when she passed away some years ago, I, I had the job of cleaning out her house and I found it very, very hard to let go of some stuff. And um, I think clothes was the hardest. Um, because a lot of the other stuff my, my dad was actually, um, keeping because he was moving into her house, but things like clothes, um, I had a lot of, lot of trouble getting rid of because, you know, you remember, um, seeing them in those clothes. It's really personal. So, um, I bagged a lot of stuff and I, I ended up taking a lot of stuff to charity some months later. But um, some of the pieces that I really remember her wearing, like this dress, I kept. And um, I thought, well, she was very short and wide, <laughs> which, which, um, and she had little tiny T-Rex arms. So a lot of her clothes she used to, um, you know, alter to fit her. She made her own clothes, but if she bought it like this, I just cut the tag off. If she bought it, she would alter it to fit her size. Um, so, you know, it's not like anyone could really wear her clothes. She had a unique size and sh shape. Um, but some of the fabric, while the whole dress itself looks really old and granny and ugly, when you cut it down to a small piece like this, it's really beautiful. And, um... So I was lucky enough to uh, get a lot of her old vintage fabric from her sewing fabric stockpile, like actual proper um, things of fabric, um, and also some fabric from her old dresses. And trust me, she had dresses from the 60s and 70s in there because she never threw anything away. Okay, um, I normally just glue the fabric down a little bit first before I sew it and a couple of reasons um I don't iron my fabric <laughs> I find that when you glue it down um it kind of irons out itself so I glue it down it holds it in place while you sew it and it also um irons it <laughs> if that makes sense so if you've got like really wrinkly uh fabric once you glue it down and smooth it out it, it's it's ironed. But to glue it down, I've been using this Bostick um, glue stick. This will hold it in place a little, but it doesn't iron it <laughs> as well as this one. So, um, but this one's a little dearer, but I've had these kicking around for a while. So I, I don't actually like these glue sticks other than for um, gluing fabric down like this because it's very sticky and it takes a lot longer. These dry super duper fast. And on hot days like today, um, sometimes it's dry before you can even put your paper down. But this um, Bostick one, it's a bit stickier and a little bit wetter. It um, takes a bit longer to dry. So I find you can put glue over a whole piece like this. Um, and it doesn't dry as quick. And it, you've also got some time to move the fabric around if you don't get it in the right spot. Now, I don't try and position the fabric. Um, so that, you know, things are in a certain place. I just glue it down. <laughs> so, I mean, you can try and get, you know, I just cut it and glue it. Where it ends up, it ends up. Okay. So just glue that baby down. Oh, my gosh. I must, must remember to get some more baking paper. Okay, so then you end up with this. 
Now, I usually just, um, because this glue is, is quite sticky and takes longer to dry, I, I usually just do a whole bunch of these and I chuck them aside at the end of the night and I leave them and I come back the next morning. You don't need to wait overnight though. Um, just give it maybe 10 minutes or so before you put it through your sewing machine. But ta-da! <laughs> I have one <laughs> ready. This really is. I feel like I'm on one of those cooking shows where they mix a cake and then ta-da! The cake's ready. Anyway, then I sew that baby. Now, I do also have a few papers ready and I've kept it the same as the other notebooks. I've got some coffee dyed paper, book page, um, James, I said to you the other day, or was it today? I can't remember. Never, never miss an opportunity to get rid of a book page, okay? Wherever you can stick a book page, stick that baby in because these things, oh man, they breed overnight. I have so many book pages to use up, it's ridiculous. I have so many used security envelopes as well to use up, it's ridiculous. Anyway, so same papers. I've got that ready. Now I'm just going to sew around the edge. Do you want to see me sew it? Um, yeah, okay. Let me move you to my sewing machine and and uh, torch you, torch you a little bit more, eh? Two ticks. Okay, so I hope you can see and I hope that I'm not putting my boobies in front of the camera or something oops let me use that okay excuse my mess and dust bunnies and everything around my desk Ooh, did you hear that that's thunder sounds like we're going to have um another storm oops okay i'm just using a small zigzag stitch but you can straight stitch whatever, big zigzag, whatever you like, something fancy. I don't have any fancy stitches on my sewing machine. Now what have I done here? I've folded that over by the looks of it. See how sticky that plastic glue is? I can't even lift that, so I'm going to leave it. Is it smooth on the other side? Yeah, that's better. I don't know if you can see. I have to slow when I get to the end because I'm really blind. I'll go off the edge. <laughs> Hear that angry sound my sewing machine made? Um, someone said it might be the wrong size bobbin in. I did buy some new bobbins a while back and I did take the old one to make sure I got the right size. I don't know if that's it or not. But... sure if it's the bobbin or not because it doesn't do it all the time okay let's move back up whoops okie dokie feel like you're a jump i need like two cameras and you go camera one crap camera two choo, choo, choo. okay Now I just trim the fabric. Oh, that little label that we cut off as well. <laughs> I keep those as well because I um I use them for whatever. You can put them in sewing theme journal journals or little clusters or um, there's some little sewing theme charms I made ages ago. 
Actually, I need to make some more of those. Um, I'll put the link down below if you haven't seen that. But I love making little things like that. Little metal bits and bobs and... Now these are my fabric scissors, only for fabric, but people always come in my room and use them for paper. Darren, Bradley, I feel like they're a bit blunt, I need um, a new one, a new pair. And these little scraps, yes, keep them. There's a, <laughs> you should see the pile. There's this like mound on my desk. I've got scrap fabric everywhere. And all these little dusty bits, I usually just like swipe them on my floor and then Darren comes in and sweeps them up. There's a dust, little dustpan thing <laughs> in the corner because he hates them on the floor. So I don't need to sweep them because I know, I know they're going to bug him enough and uh he'll do it <laughs> see and they come out nice and flat and smooth and sturdy i just love them anyway then we'll sew the little papers in and if you if you noticed look i left straight edges on see are you proud of me i usually straight edges <laughs> bug me and i have to rip those little bits off there's a little tiny bit up there um, but yeah, I left them on and I actually quite like the look. So, see, this is what I was talking about. You know, before when I showed a little piece um, over the fold, that's what I mean, that tiny little piece on the fold mark that comes up. Look, I did it again there. You think I'd learn after the 10th uh, time of doing it, but no, I just keep doing it. Okay. So get your little papers ready and I just usually I just use um when I make these for myself to put in journals I just use whatever scrap papers out of my scrap box um, but in this case I've actually used proper papers since I'm putting them in my uh, Etsy and you may not like my junk although if you ever buy one of my journals you'll get it anyway okay this one's a little bit a little bit too big I'm going to just look threads everywhere okay I'm just going to trim this one off a little tiny teeny tiny bit was it too long as well I tried to use all the same size envelopes so I could cut all the pages at the same time but um, might give it a teeny smidgen off the bottom. But yeah, when you rip the envelopes open, some rip more than others. So that once you trim them down, they're all slightly different sizes. That's okay though. This one, I just saw a little bit of fabric. No, I shouldn't have moved you back up there, should I? I should have left you at my sewing machine because now I'm going to take you back to my sewing machine. Now, when um when I sew these, because I'm blind, well, I'm not blind, but I have an eye problem. I've got an eye operation next month. I can't see the fold mark properly. So what I've been doing is I just rule a line down the middle with a pen and you're going to sew over that anyway and so you won't see it well you won't see mine because I'm using a dark brown thread but if you're using white thread I suppose you'll have a problem anyway then I just uh, flatten it and I put a little clip and then I'll just do a straight stitch 
straight down there. Let me pause you and put you back where I should left you. I'm probably making this look really long and complicated, but it's really not. They're, they're very easy to make. They, um, oops, just change it to a straight stitch. Um, they're very easy to make. And if you make one like this, it may seem like it takes longer. If you, you do a whole bunch at, at once, then you can, you know, do all the collaging together. Do all the trimming together, do all the sewing together, so um, it's a lot quicker. They're still a bit time consuming because all the gluing and sewing and that, but um, it's not as time, consume, time consuming if you make a lot at once. Okay, wow, it's come over so dark and it's going to storm outside, which is good. We really we need some rain in Sydney. Okay. Oh, let me get that back. Let's flatten that baby. Now, a lot of the times I leave my threads on, but... I don't like the threads left on the top of the journal, uh, not journals, uh, notepads for some reason. So I'm just going to trim those off. Is there still a thread somewhere there? Okay, and that's your recycled little fabric notebook. I think there's still a thread somewhere. There is. Why are there so many threads? Okay. And you can put as many pages in as you want. So you can put way more pages than this. And in fact, these are good to make if you use traveller's notebooks. Um, if you've got a traveller's notebook cover, these are really good for you to use in those. They're a really cheap alternative and you can make them yourself. And if you don't have a sewing machine, you know, I should have shown one, but if you don't have a sewing machine, you can just staple that. So if you've got something like this... Um, <laughs> like this this is a long reach stapler and so this is um this is left over from my accounting days as you can see it's very dusty i haven't used it in ages oh my gosh it's so dusty um yeah when i used to bind root ports at home at the end of the month anyway so this is a long reach stapler so you can reach right into the middle Although these, I mean, you could probably use a regular stapler for these, but if they were wider. So, yeah, if you don't have a sewing machine, you can staple them. You don't have to sew around the edges. You can just glue it down. Anyway, so that's my little fabric covered notebook. I mean, I'm sure you've seen plenty of these on YouTube anyway. It's not something new. Everyone makes them or variations of them. But anyway, so... I'll put um, four little packs into my Etsy. Now, you can pick which one. If there's a fabric that you would prefer, like if you wanted all of the one type of fabric in one of the packs, just send me a, a note through Etsy and I can make you one with just a particular type of fabric if I've still got some of that fabric left. Or if you wanted like four different blue fabrics, for example. Um, yeah, just message me through Etsy. Anyway, that's it. Uh, thanks for hanging about and I'll catch you later. Bye.